Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you the cosine rule. Um, this follows on nicely from my previous video on the sine rule, as it also applies to non right angle triangles, where we've got angles that are labeled, say, capital A, B, and C. And just like the sine rule, their opposite sides are labeled with the same letter, just lowercase. Um, now, the cosine rule can be found to find side lengths or sizes of angles. And the difference with the sine rule is that we use the cosine rule. Firstly, as I mentioned, non-right angle triangles, but also non-right angle triangles, but also we also use them where we don't know a pairing. Now, I mentioned in my previous video on the sine rule, if I actually know a pair of an angle and a side length, um, then we use the sine rule. But if we don't, we use the cosine where we don't know a pairing of side length and angle. So you'll see in a few examples, um, a few examples that we're going to do right now, you'll see what I mean by that. Okay, so finding side lengths. There are two versions of the cosine rule, depending on what you're trying to do. For finding side lengths, um, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. And for finding angles, then we just rearrange that slightly and we put the cosine c as the subject equal to a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab. Okay, so there are two versions depending on what you're trying to do. Okay, so I'll just, just put those in boxes so they stand out a bit. Okay, all right, so we're going to go ahead and use those now. So, Example one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Forgot about this bit. Um, yeah, I just put this extra bit of information in actually, um, just to say when we use it. So basically for me, I think it's easiest to know, use it when you don't have a pairing. That might be when you've got two sides in an angle. Okay, so you might have an angle, two sides, you might be trying to find a third side. Okay, or you might know three sides and you might be trying to find a particular angle, say. All right, so let's go and have a look at some examples. Work out the length of x in the diagram below. So all I'm going to do, first of all, is just go and label these things. OK, so I know I'm going to be using this formula. C squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. OK, now the thing, the pairing sort of, you know, I don't know the pairing, but I'm going to call this c and this small c. And then these can be a and b because it'll just fit nicely into my, my formula. OK, so I've got. Um, x squared for my c, because my c is x, x squared equals, if I now put these values in, 22 squared plus 28 squared minus 2 times 22 times 28 times by cos 97. Okay, if I'm super careful putting those into my calculator, um, I'm going to find that that is equal to 1418.143031. Okay, it keeps going. Obviously, I keep that exact answer in my calculator, and I find x by doing the square root of that last answer, okay? Um, and so I get my value of x to be 37.7 um, to three significant figures. Now, that um, is, you know, there's no units there, are there? So it's three significant figures. I'll just leave it like that, okay? Great. Okay, example two. Um, this next one then is a very similar example. I'm just going to label up the sides again. So I've got C and C, A and B. Okay. And uh, C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. The more that you actually write that down, the, the better it is, the quicker you are with it to remember it. And it's not actually, I don't know, my personal experience is that students don't find it too difficult to remember actually. So h squared equals, let's go, 88 squared plus 146 squared minus 2 times 88 times 146 cos 53. Okay, that's going to give us a value of h squared of um, 13595.76117. Keep it in the calculator. We're going to just get a square root that answer. I just use my answer button. And I get an answer of 117. 
to three significant figures. Again, that's a side length that I don't have, I don't know the units. It's not telling me in the question what the units are. So 117, sorry, I'll just make that a bit easier to see, to three significant figures. Okay, so there's just a couple of examples of finding missing sides using this version of the cosine rule. I'm now gonna go into example three and four, which are gonna look at finding angles from using the cosine rule, okay? So let's just copy down what I wrote down earlier about finding angles. Um, cos C is equal to A squared plus B squared minus C squared over 2AB. Okay, we're going to use that now. Um, let's go label things. So there's C, and there's C, and there's A, and there's B. So in this case, C is P. So cos P is equal to 8 squared plus 5 squared minus, in this case, 7 squared divided by two times eight times five. If I put that into my calculator, I actually find that that is equal to one half. Now let's remember the trick, um, the classic trick. I've got cosine over here. I want the P on its own. So I'm gonna do the, the inverse cosine on this side of a half. And you'll find that this is equal to 60 degrees. Okay, so that's just plugging in. It's just substitution, isn't it? Basically, if you know the formula. And in many syllabuses, um, they actually give you the formula as well. Okay. But, you know, as I said, I do find that students don't actually find it that difficult to remember. Okay, let's keep going. Last one, example four. Um, last one with angles. Um, this time we're trying to find this angle here. Let's call it C, opposite side C. And we've got sides A and B on either side of it. Okay. Same thing again. Cosine C is equal to a squared plus b squared minus c squared divided by 2ab. It's a case of plugging values into this. So we get that cosine a is equal to 3.1 squared plus 4.3 squared minus 5.9 squared divided by 2 times 3.1 times 4.3. Okay, be really careful with that in your calculator. Um, you find that cosine A, you put that into your calculator properly, um, hmm, let's do it, 3.1 squared, oops, 3.1 squared, what, plus 4.3 squared, minus 5.9 squared, divided by 2 times 3.1 times 4.3, I get an answer of about, well, it comes out as a fraction on my calculator actually, it's minus 671 over 2666. Okay, so all I have to do then is cos to the minus one of the answer of minus 671 over 2666. Uh, so in first cause, I just always use my answer button and I get an answer. Remember when it's um, angles, generally it's one decimal place is the degree of accuracy you're going for. So I get 104.6 degrees. Okay, so that's the cosine rule in a nutshell. I really hope that that tutorial has been helpful in your work. And if you have enjoyed the video, please don't hesitate to subscribe. Uh, much appreciated. And good luck with your work. All the best.